Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums, tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys out there in the viewerverse, I've got some No Man's Sky news for you. You're probably thinking, oh, what, a, what new news, Captain of the Steves? It's not really new news, it's just sort of trying to frame this emoji. I mean, last time, the actual update video that I did, or my speculation thereof, I kept it kind of grounded. I didn't go full on hype train type mode so i figured i'd do a hype train type mode video for those people that love the speculation and where this stuff could go but this is just wishful thinking on my part and how i think maybe this emoji could tie into something super freaking awesome so let's get into this shall we let's jump on over onto the old tinterwebs and let's have a quick look at that Okay, so here I am over on my community tab where I put up quite a lot of interesting polls, or at least I think they're interesting, or else I wouldn't bother doing them. So here we go. Here we go. The emoji, and it's the Earth emoji for No Man's Sky. From comments and feedback, here are the top items I'm seeing. Vote for the ones you feel is most likely. And we've got planetary variety, old planetary styles perhaps, proc gen, ocean shaders, etc. Yeah, it's complete planet overhaul perhaps. Global game saves. Play any save on any platform within reason. And the reason I put within reason is because I really don't know whether Switch would be in the mix, considering that they can't have settlements. You know, how would that work? Quin quandary that. Uh, something to do with light, no fire, not no man's sky. Seeing that a heck of a lot in my comments, saying, what if it's not this? Because there's no sales, the depots haven't been touched. You know, the normal signs are not there this time, Captain Steve. What if it's something to do with light, no fire? You could be right. You could be right. And that's what I did speculate in my previous video, where I was down hyping things. This is up hyping things, I guess. OK, multi biome, planets in no man's sky, planet rotation, time of day, etc. Now, Sean of the Morris has retweeted and he's used all three of these sort of globe emojis in different positions. So it almost looks like the Earth is rotating or it could be that maybe planets are now going to have three separate biomes. So we'll get into that in a moment, people. Adding in Homeworld, Void Prime, and the end part of the ARG Part 4, because we haven't had that concluded, we haven't had it confirmed that that's actually happened. Now, 40% of people inside of this poll are saying that they think that it is going to be the planetary game saves, the global game saves, like I mentioned in my previous video. So I think a lot of people are sharing the same sorts of sentiments as me and not getting overly hyped or excited which I think is good to curb your expectations, but at the same time, let's go and set the bar a bit higher on where it could go to if we go off into the realms of thought-provoking ideas. I mean, at the end of the day, if these ideas don't come in during this update, hopefully Hello Games will see this video and say, actually, that's not a bad idea. Maybe we could do that in a future upper date. So yeah, it could happen in future is where I'm going with this, people. Anyhow, shall we jump on over to an older video? Actually, no, no, let's just have a look at my other poll as well. So I also put out this poll. Another idea for the emoji is terraforming of planets and bringing dead systems back to life. I mean, as we fly into those abandoned stations, it comes up with welcome home. We had the Utopia Expedition, where we had to work for the Utopia Corporation, completely survey a system. And then that system came back to life if you went and visited after the actual expedition. We've had a drift that throws us into an alternate realm, where the abandoned systems are completely abandoned and there's hardly anything there, no life at all. Back to yesteryear way of gaming. And it could it be that they're going to get those two expeditions, Utopia and Adrift, splice them together and make something to cool around the abandoned systems and what if we could actually use our wonders to then populate the planets and terraform planets how we like to see and feel now a lot of people feel that in this might be too big and i kind of feel that it is so you know it's good that you guys are on the same page but it doesn't hurt to do a little bit of speculation a little bit of idea fluffing and hopefully put a video out there that hello games go hmm Actually, that's got legs. All right, so let me just jump on over to one of my videos that I've done on terraforming. We'll make this a little bit larger on screen. And I think I'll probably try to make it a little bit larger still on screen. So if I jump on over to there, and then I could leave me on the screen like this, but I'm outside of my box. Does that really overly matter? I don't know whether it does. I don't think it does overly, does it? Mm, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. That's cool. And I'll hit play. Here we go. So this is one of my old videos from some time ago. Just freaking move. 
Um, so yeah, <laughs> you could actually try and push to get that Quicksilver. So yeah, it, it does kind of make sense. It could work quite well. So as you can see here, I'm just running around a random planet, scanning myself some rocks, some flora, and some fauna. So yeah, I'm just going to collect all that up inside my Discoveries page, and the Discoveries page will become a lot more useful with this actual idea in part two, because there is a second part to this idea. So if you come across a dead planet, or those exotic biomes, you know, like the capped ones, or the shelled ones, or the ones with the machine type parts, you know, the ones with the exotic glitch trophies, they've probably got the one fauna on there those sort of worlds, or all the dead or airless worlds. I'm, I'm hoping to have some sort of terraforming device that you can place on those planets and actually claim them as your own and then create new biomes on there. And not just a singular biome, so you could create a multiple biome type planet if you want. So here I am, I'm just touching down on one of those um, capped planets at the moment. You can see here it's quite lush already, it's got beautiful grass coloration. So maybe, you know, I, I might want to keep that beautiful glass coloration. But yeah, there's all different sliders that you could probably use to actually uh, tone this up and do what you want with it, or place different sorts of plants on there from your Discoveries page, but we'll get that into that into a moment. Now there isn't a terraformer at the moment, so I'm just going to use a beacon. They're kind of defunct anyway. I mean, they could kind of just change this into a terraformer, and no one's going to freaking miss it, because these don't do heckin' nothing anymore. So here we go, so let's uh, kick that into life. And yeah, so I'm just going to quickly mock up a quick image and place it over the top of this to show you what I'm on about. So here you go. So once you actually go into here, Terraforming Planet, select options. You can hit Randomize or Customize. Now if you do hit the Randomize, it gives you a rough idea in the top right hand corner what it may do to the planet. So in this case, it may give you tropical climate with fungal type spores and toxic storms. It's definitely going to give you higher water levels and water life. And there's also a chance that it's going to increase the life forms on the planet, so not just one fauna anymore. So you could just hit randomize, or you can hit customize. And in customize, you can actually select different hemisphere separations. You can have up to four biomes. So I've gone with frost on top and bottom to give it like poles to the north and south. And then you can add fauna or mineral or whatever discoveries you wish to the actual planet and build this out how you want, as you like it, and even set different tints and colors and terraform a planet. So after you've done all your terraforming, your scanning, all that sort of stuff, head on up to your freighter. There may need to be a new console for this or a new sort of interaction terminal where you just hook up to it, fire it up and say, yeah, I want to hold an auction. It takes a couple of seconds to call in the actual different sort of races from around the verse and they appear as holographic projections above this sort of like um, doohickey here, this holographic planetary type thing. Because that kind of makes sense. It kind of work. It pushes people to get a decent freighter and stuff, doesn't it? But here we go. Here's the races. So yeah, the Corvax are offering nanites, the Gek are offering units, and the Viking are offering Quicksilver, and depending on your um, rate of discoveries and things, you can choose which one you want, or you can just hit leave if you don't like any of those options. But yeah, after you've actually selected that race and their favour and accepted their gift, um, yep, you will get that in your bank account, and then they will spawn in, like I was mentioned earlier. So the station will appear, all the outposts will appear, and then all the different systems make sense then, don't they? It really does. It's a great idea! So as you see there, chums, that would work for any sort of, I don't know, terraforming catastrophe planets, airless worlds, exotic bio... Righto, people. So there you go. I took myself off the screen because I was covering some information there, but I think you get the basic premise of that. Now, I did do another video which goes into terraforming, but on a smaller level, which might work better with our current discoveries page. I mean, I made both of these videos before the Wonders catalogue came in and before all this other decent stuff came into game. So I think this has got more legs now. I think they've got the building blocks. I think they've got the foundations. Let's just jump on over and I'll play that one quickly as well, people and scan the flora, which I think could tie in quite nicely to building fauna on a planet, because at the moment, dead planets have no fauna. So it'd be nice to be able to bring in some sort of egg machine into your base onto one of these dead planets. So you touch down on a planet, 
Yeah, okay, brilliant. Yeah, I quite like this world. But it has no fauna. So there we go, no fauna on here. So I might start scanning a few rocks and a few flora just to build up some sort of DNA repository to get an idea what the biome is and all that sort of stuff for my computer once I've built a base. So here you go, I've just built a very crude base. Right, oh, awesome. Got myself a base. Now I need to place in the egg machine. So the egg sequencer goes there. Chica pow pow, chica pum pum. Install a mondo. And now I can put in my egg so actually i interface with the actual device first and it brings up a menu swish dapper created this on photoshop you put in your egg you select what sort of fauna you want to generate from your egg it looks at the dna but you can also put in quicksilver items there so yeah and it starts sort of doing what it does and it sort of generates out creatures that make sense to the creature in your eggs so if you put a diplo in there it's going to have the diplo that you've got but it would take into account what biome it is so it may change some of the things so this is a fungal planet so it might put some shrooms or some sort of fungal sort of textures or something on your actual creature that makes sense to the biome so it may alter what the creatures look like slightly on the planet but then it would create sort of subsections of creature so there might be like a, a little deer creature that it creates as well that's got similar sort of you know markings and stuff as your actual diplo but then if you put quicksilver items in there it may replace items that you've scanned in the flora database with the two things that you've put in from the quicksilver database so in this case i might even get those little mud huts on a fungal world randomly generated which would be freaking awesome okay so i think that'd be nice like a mini terraformer based on your pet's dna is where i'm going with this now so I honestly do think that that is a pretty darn freaking awesome idea and i think it's something that could be tangible doable so in either of those, really, when it comes to planetary terraforming, I really like the idea of being able to sell it to the different races. And obviously they'd be interested, say, if you scanned all the rocks, the Gek would be more interested in the you, and offer you a higher value. If you scanned all the actual animals, then the Viking more interested, etc. You know, I think that could work quite nicely. And then we go from being this galactic traveller that goes around renaming things to a galactic traveller that's actually helping all the races bring back dead systems. It kind of gives us a better function as a traveller or an anomaly inside of the remit of No Man's Sky. So I kind of feel that that's got quite a lot of legs. What do you guys think? Sound up in the comments and let us know. But yeah, just to set expectations, I still think this is going to be a functional update because we was actually shown a few things inside of the game files, inside of Experimental Branch. So I've got one more video to play where we go over exactly what's been found inside of the data mining of experimental branch people inside of the viewerverse I guess so let me let me just cue that one up I won't be a second okay so I'm gonna jump back on over and I'm gonna hit play I've took me off the screen for this one because um, I'm already on the screen talking so it'd be an inception type thing if I didn't where uh, if I can find a console in here to go and hit up for one second oh this thing will do here we go let's go and hit this up I'll show you ghost lights video on cross saves and what that bomber boy has shared over on Twitter so here we go people execute them on now okay so this is a portion of ghost lights video and he talks about something that that bomber boy has posted over on the Twitter space so let's uh, turn the volume up let's hit play now, as I was saying Bomber posted some changes to the game files, which were made via an experimental branch update yesterday, June 11th. Strangely, no patch notes were added to Steam DB for this version. Now, that's likely because all of these files and features are not currently active in the experimental branch update. They were just added to the game as unused assets. Now, this could mean that Hello Games is slowly preloading assets for a coming update. That said, there's also a chance that these files were just being tested and may end up being removed later. Cool. So what are these files? Well, I'm uh, glad you asked. I was about to First, ask. Yeah. Some of the updated game files appear to reference new cooking recipe titles that have yet to be attributed to any in-game item. Now you can see in this post by that bomber boy, Fruity pudding is already a recipe in game, but the items highlighted in yellow, syrupy nectar, seeping pie, mm. mucilant tart. Quite yeah. a lot of new ones. Now, two of these recipes may be related to bug byproducts with bee meat and bug jam. Bug jam, yeah. But this is in line with what we've seen in previous updates further expanding on the ever-growing list of cooking recipes. Why though? Much like 
the biscuit recipes with the Omega update. But no one really cooks, why? Now next, we see what appears to be text hinting at changes made to the Sentinel Walker UI. Now, these added text entries reference a Sentinel Walker boss HUD similar to that of the Pirate Dreadnought. Mm. You can see in the files here, the shields here are likely referencing a shield bar that gets reduced as you destroyed the existing varied armor component. So they might be it's making the walker, the walker tougher as well. It does seem that the walker itself is getting a health bar added as well. Now this could mean that the Sentinel Walker may prove a more formidable boss fight. Pretty in a epic. Update. Pretty cool, must say. And finally, this last component is more than just text prompts hinting at a new feature. This is something the community has been begging for for years. Better multiplayer. It? Well, it's cloud saves and cross save <laughs> compatibility. Now, awesome. per that bomber boy, Hello Games has had a developer only cloud save server endpoint active for about a month. But recently that endpoint was pushed from dev only to QA, signaling Whoa. that they're ready to begin testing. But testing what? Like, what does it all mean? Well, has he activated the new experimental it? branch game files added a new cloud save menu. Bomber as Boy's well going to toggle it on, isn't to he? help link your device to an HG account. Okay. Now, these assets in game aren't currently working. Um, that Bomber Boy forced them active into Brilliant. his game. Like he did with the station it type seems bees. That this new feature will make it possible to play any of your saved games across any supported device or platform. Now, I'm sure. Show there us will an be image. Some limitations. Looking at you, Nintendo Switch. <laughs> oh, yeah. This I suppose is so. very promising. And there's even some talk about upgrading a save from any major version to the current one, which is something that faces some limitations currently. So, what do you think? Are you excited for Walker Boss Huds? Yes. Uh, new pie recipes? Not so or much. Cross save compatibility? Yes, a little. Let me know. Like, in yeah. the comments because below. because of the old multiplayer and that's it I okay people so if you haven't already subscribed to ghost line you know obviously please do he's freaking awesome but yeah that's that's pretty much everything that i've got what i think this earth emoji could be this globe earth emoji unless it is something just for light no fire i mean considering we haven't seen the depots make a change considering we haven't seen the sales on all three platforms this is very much out of the realms of normal when it comes to how hello games normally operate going by patterns it could be a small update containing those things that ghost just pointed out that have been data mined so everything might already be in pc experimental that needs to be pushed out hence why we've not seen any changes to the depots hence why this is kind of like an update by stealth but if it is an update by stealth, it means that we probably aren't going to get another expedition with it. It is going to be an overhaul to the um, Sentinels, a few new cooking recipes, and this global save type system. That could be everything that's on the radar for this update. So it could be quite a small one, but it could keep us busy in a roundabout way up until maybe the summer update, which I still think is going to happen, say, mid-August to mid-September time, around there. Anyways, that's everything I've got for you. Sound up in the comments. Let me know what you think. Obviously, I know what a lot of you think from those polls that I've already put out on my community tab, and I'm kind of on the same page. I think this is going to be a small functional update, this one. It's just not... It hasn't got the same levels of hype that Hello Games and Sean Murray normally drives for this one. It just doesn't feel the same as some of the larger updates of yesteryear when it comes to hype and driving of hype i mean it could change it's early monday today it could be that they put out you know a trailer with voiceover lady they might even drop a gib which is like this strange like emoji thing that sean does every time there's a huge update breaking news guard. people breaking news something mental has just happened sean of the murray has just tweeted the gib emoji the gib emoji has appeared a he only ever done this when there's been massive updates and he's done something a little bit crazy with this one let me jump on over to the old tinterwebs because i'm seriously losing my freaking call right now people this this is insane this is like christmas okay right here we go <laughs> oh, shite okay here we are um yeah boom oh one one so this is what sean of the murrays has tweeted out just 25 minutes ago it's the gib emoji but he's put the globes in as eyeballs and one by the hand as well. 
So this was what he'd done before, but now he's done it with the Gib. I honestly think now that we're seeing like these three different biomes, maybe planets are going to get mixed biomes. Maybe we are going to get the ability to terraform. Seriously, people, if if this is some sort of trolley thing, he's freaking gone and took it to another level. I'm really hoping this means that we are going to get something a little bit special with this update. Maybe this week we might not see the update drop. Maybe this week we might see a trailer with voiceover lady. Oh my days, this has just taken my whole speculation, my whole hype levels to another freaking level, people. I've got my first class ticket. I am running all the way up to first freaking class to join everybody inside of hype train mode. People, for me, this changes everything. This, all those video clips that I put up at the start about maybe this might happen, is now more plausible to me than just the global game save happening. It's the give emoji. It's the give emoji. It's the give emoji. <laughs> we haven't seen the likes of this since the last large update, either Origins, Beyond, or Next. This thing is as rare as Rocking Horde Turd in the realm of Shaun of the Murrays. It's reserved for special occasions. Let's just hope this is a special occasion. Let's hope that I'm not reading into this too much over a single freaking emote. All right, people. <laughs> I was just editing the video and Ricey pinged me. He sent me a DM and said, Captain Steve, check out Sean Murray's freaking tweet. It looks like he's just done the gib emoji. Thank you for the heads up. I'm back to my editor to throw this in. This is outstanding. Amazing. I can't wait now. I'm super excited. <laughs> if that happens, I'm going to get super excited. If it doesn't happen, I'm staying rather neutral on this one. I kind of feel that anything that comes into No Man's Sky is good. But at the same time, I think this might just be a functional, smaller update than what we usually get around this sort of time of year. Yeah, well, well, we ain't got long to find out. I honestly think this is happening this week. I still think Wednesday or Thursday this week, this update's going to drop. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.